So for example number three, remember what we're trying to do here is for related rates, we're just going to take the different, we're going to differentiate a, a function uh, with differentials with respect to a third or fourth variable. And that will give us rates changed, and then we, we plug it in the formula. Uh, all the formulas and all these problems are rates where we're going to know everything except for one rate of change, and that's the one that they're going to ask us to solve for. So example number three, let me read it out loud, and then we'll go from there. It says a police cruiser approaching a right angle uh, intersection from the north is chasing a speeding car that has turned the corner and is now moving east. When the cruiser is 0.6 miles north of the intersection and the car is 0.8 miles to the east, the police determined that with radar that the distance between them and the car is increasing at 20 miles per hour. If the cruiser is moving at 60 miles per hour at the instant of measurement, what is the speed of the car? Okay. So let's draw a picture on this one. So here's what it looks like. There's an intersection. Here is the car. This is the speeding car. That's my car. We'll call them speeder or speedy. And then we have the police car here. And uh, it's hard to draw. I've got to draw like a top view, I guess. Um, so it's a police car. So we'll look at it from the top. These are the little blue and red lights flashing. Okay. And so we have two cars. We have this car going this way. We have our police car going this way. And I'm gonna label these things. This is like X. This is my Y. And uh, it's a right, a right triangle, so we'll just call this Z, just for, uh, just for, for sake of the uh, problem. So now, let me reread this again, and we're, we're going to try to figure out what they're, what they're trying to do. We'll label it with the picture. It says, police cruiser is uh, heading north on a right angle intersection, and when the cruiser is 0.6 miles north, so of the intersection. So this is like 0.6 miles, right? The distance from here to here, right? That's the 0.6 miles. He notices that the car is 0.8 miles east. So from here to here, it's 0.8 miles east. And then it says that the cruiser at an instant in time the cruiser at an instant in time, at that instant in time, was going 60 miles per hour. And with some sort of radar, he determined that the speeding car was going, was moving away from him at a rate of 20 miles per hour. All right, so the way this works is, we're going to have to label some things and we have to find a mathematical relationship between X, Y, and Z, okay? So that mathematical relationship is that x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared, right? Pythagorean theorem, correct? Yes. Yeah. Now, we have a rate of change, okay? Um, this is at 20 miles. It's moving away from him at 20 miles an hour. And, he, you know, if he's using his radar, that would be like, his rate of change over time, or dz dt is equal to 20 miles per hour. Okay? And, oh, I'm sorry, I got this wrong. The cruiser is not heading this way, he's heading this way. So this is technically, this would be like dy dt, and if that's the case, If that's dy dt, that would be like negative 60 miles per hour. So we have some rates of changes here. We have a dy dt and a dz dt. 
because this car is moving in this direction and this car is moving in this direction. So he's approaching. I, I read, well, I read it, but I thought it wrong when I drew the picture. And what they're asking us is, is to determine the speed of the car. So you have this police cruiser that's approaching from the north. That's where I messed up. It said from the north. Yeah, from the north, not any north. So technically, he's going south. As he's approaching, he sees this car moving away from him, and he, he points his uh, radar gun at the car, and he sees that the car is moving away from him at a rate of 20 miles per hour. And he wants to determine what the speed of the car is. Okay. We see that there's a mathematical relationship. Now, I put dy dt and dz dt because it's a unit of measure is miles, but it's with respect to time. And so our unit of measure of time is h. So the way to solve this problem, really what he's looking for, is dx dt. What is his rate of change in the x direction? So let's go to the, the other slide. If I have x squared plus y squared equals z squared, and I already know that dy dt is equal to negative 60 miles per hour, and dz dt is equal to 20 miles per hour, and they want to know what dx dt is, what do I need to do to this equation? Take the derivative with respect to time. So how, what does that look like? Let me show you. It, it's not that hard. It's a little different than what you guys are used to. I'm going to take the derivative of this with respect to t. When you say, Mr. Adams, there isn't a single t in the equation. Nobody cares. t represents the value of time. When I take the derivative with respect to time, it, I put t in there, right? We could think of it as like t being t raised to the zero power, right? Remember in algebra, whatever we do to one side, if we do it on the other side of the equal sign, it's legitimate. So I can introduce the rate of change with respect to time as long as I do it to the entire equation. Now, what's the derivative of x? 2x. 2x. So I'm going to say 2x, right? Yeah. But I'm taking the derivative of x with respect to time. What's the derivative of y? Two. Squared. 2y squared, what do I put here? dy over dt. dy dt. And what's the derivative of z squared? 2z dz over dt. See what I did there? Now, only thing that we have to remember, or we need, is an x and y value. If I get an x and y value, I have all numbers, right? Well, did we have an x and y value? Let's see. Yeah, I think we did, didn't we? Looks like I get to the slide. Our x value was 0.8. Our y value was 0.6. Okay. So over here, I've got 0.8, and I've got 0.6 finals. Okay. Um, what do you notice about the whole equation? What do you see on every one of those terms? Two. Two. So I can just toss the twos out, right? If I divide everything by two, I'll get the equation x dx dt plus y dy dt is equal to z dz dt, right? Um, x is 0.8 times dx dt, which was negative 60, right? Or no, wait. That's what we're solving for, isn't it? Yeah. So that one just stays dx dt plus y, which is 0. 0.6, times dy dt, which was negative 60 miles per one hour, bless you, is equal to, and I'm going to erase this so I have a little room. Is that okay? We know where it's coming from. Um, Z, what was Z? Do we know what Z was? I thought we were solving. Z is... Could we find we're Z? We're solving for Z. We're, we're solving, solving for Z. For Z. No, we're not solving for Z. We're solving for DX, DT. Oh, no. We're solving for 
we can find it though, right? So if I go back here, um, in other words, let me let me go to a different page so I have a little room. We've got we've got a scenario like this where I have. You gotta give my uh, whiteboard a chance to catch up to me. This is 0.6. This is 0.8. Um, I would guess that, what is that, 3, 4, 5 times 2. So this would be probably 1.0 if I had to guess, right? So where did I get that 1.0 from? Well, I'm going to say 0 0.6 squared plus 0.8 squared, and then take the square root of it should equal my hypotenuse C, or Z in this case, right? Well, this becomes 3.6 plus 6.4. 10. Oh, wait. What's the square root of 10? That can't be right. It's not 1. What did I do wrong? Let's, let's do the calculator and see. Maybe it's 100. No, I don't know. Let's see. It should be 1. Wait. 0. 0.6 squared is 0. 0.36, not 3.6. 0.36. You're right. So I got the decimals wrong. It's right. I'm just doing this in a hurry. It's 0.36 plus 0.64, which is 1.00. Is that right? Sorry about that. I forgot you got to move the decimal twice. Okay. So then z equals 1. So now let's go back. So way over here, I've got 1 times dz dt, which was what? 20 miles per hour. All right, let's uh, let's extend the page here. So this is is that uh, negative 3.6? Negative 36. Yeah, that's right. Negative 36 miles per hour is equal to 20 miles per one hour. And then uh, I'm adding that to 0.8 dx dt. Now if I add the, the 36 to both sides, I get 0.8 dx dt is equal to 56 miles per one hour, right? Because I'm going to add 36 to both sides. Is that right? Okay. So then I'm going to divide everything by 0.8. So I'm going to say 56 divided by 0.8 would is the, 70. Would the miles cancel out on the, when you like put the 0.6 and negative 60 together and make it just not worse? Um, because it's 0.8 miles. Well, technically I should have miles in everything. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it, it would work out. The, 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 her question was, what about the dimensional? You guys... I forget that I taught you guys physics. I did the same thing second hour. We're used to like writing down all the dimensions of Mr. Adams is trying to teach the math part. But yeah, the miles would be listed and it would, our unit, our dimensional analysis should be miles per hour and it would be. I would have, um, I would have some miles squared in here, right? So, okay, you don't have to do that. well, if this would be miles, this would be miles, this would be miles, so technically I could divide everything by miles and toss it out. Does that make sense? Every term would have a mile for the x, y, z, each one of those were in. So we could, we could, we could cancel them out, uh, which I kind of did inadvertently. So anyways, uh, but that was a good question, because they asked that second hour as well. So my rate of change then, dx dt is equal to 70 miles per one hour. Now what does that mean? If you were trying to explain to somebody, a third grader walks in, sees all this stuff on the board, and says, what are you guys doing? What would you tell them? I don't know Calculus. What well, yeah, but if they wanted you to explain what you did, what would you say? Good Good talk, to him. talk to Mr. Adams. <laughs> well, what you would say is dx dt represents the rate of change in the x direction, which, referring to this problem, is that as my police cruiser as they were approaching an intersection 
Stop. They were approaching this way. There was another car that was speeding away at a rate of dx dt, 70 miles per hour, based on all the information that they were giving us. In other words, because of their distance, he clocked them at the, the rate they were moving away from him was 20 miles per hour. And then he was moving at a rate of 60 miles an hour in the negative direction. And at that particular point in time, he was 0.6 miles away from the intersection here. And he was 0.8 miles away from the intersection. So doing some calculus, we were able to calculate that the car was moving 70 miles per hour down the road in this direction, in the x direction. Yeah. Does that make sense? Any questions? No?